All right, so we are considering a rectangle with a fixed perimeter of 60. Now, if you're still here and you want to volunteer for help, I would love to have uh, you help me on this one. All right, so we have established that this rectangle has a length of L. And we know that half the perimeter, half of 60, is 30. So the width has to be 30 minus what the length is. All right, which means my equation is equal to L times 30 minus L. All right, so I'm going to use that equation to figure out the areas. So if I have an area of zero, 30 minus zero is 30. 30 times zero is zero. If I have a length of five, 30 minus five is 25. Five times 25 is 125. Uh, for 10, 30 minus 10 is 20. 20 times 10 is 200. For 15, 30 minus 15 is 15. Times 15 is 220. Oops, sorry, 225. Obviously, this should be 15. Uh, if this is if my length is 20, uh, 30 minus 20 is 10. 10 times 20 is 20 or 200. Oh, why do I keep wanting to write it over here? Oh, well, now I can see it's coming down. And, and since a parabola is uh, symmetrical, I don't need to keep doing the math on this one. I know that when this is 25, I'll have an area of 125. When I have a length of 30, what comes next? Zero. So right now I know the maximum area is 225 with a, a, a square, a, a 15 by 15 square. Um, and my x-intercepts, the solutions or roots of the equation, are going to be 30 and 0. Are there questions so far? No. Nope. nope. All right. Love it. Now, when we look at B, we have an equation. So we're stuck with the same rectangle. We have L and 35 minus L. And we're going to make a table. Uh, so this time, I'm just going to go with length and area because I seem to have troubles having the width anyways. I'm going to start at 0. I'm going to count by 5s again. And let's, let's, and I know I'm going to at least have to go up to 30, but something tells me I should probably go up to 35. I just have a feeling on this one. It's just a feeling. All right, so I know that my area is 35 minus length times length. So if I have a length of 0, my area is 0 because anything times 0 is 0. If I have a length of 5, 35 minus 5 is 30. 30 times 5 is 150. If L is 10, 35 minus 10 is 25. 25 times 10 is 225 or 250. If I use 15, 35 minus 15 is 20. 20 times 15 is 300. We got some quick math going here. Um, 35 minus 20 is 15. 15 times, oh my goodness, that's 300 again, which means this was 250, which means this is 150, and then zero. So what's happening here? Now, the most interesting thing is we know the vertex is going to take place somewhere between a length of 15 and 20, because I know, I know that you can't have two vertices. You can only have one. So um, I'm going to add a little space here. And so what's half? Well, what's a halfway in between 15 and 20? That's right, it's 17.5. And so let's plug 17.5 into the equation. And when I do that, I get, I'm writing in white, which is not the right choice for me. So uh, we have 
17.5 because 35 minus 17.5 is 17.5. And we're multiplying that by 17.5. Should have planned ahead on that one. So really, we're trying to find what 17.5 squared is. So we have 17.5 times 17.5. And so the maximum, the maximum is actually at 17.5 comma uh, 306. I'm not gonna write this well. 306.25. Now the x-intercepts are pretty easy to see because uh, all we have to do is look for when the area is zero. So here are our x-intercepts. And our y-intercept is also going to be zero comma zero, which means our line of symmetry is going to be this x value because the line of symmetry goes right through the vertex. And so that's going to be x is equal to 17.5. All right, so that's a quick little summary. I, I realize it probably feels amazing that it went so fast. Um, but that's what we were expected to get out of this class today.